Hi, I'm Ree from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing my top laundry life hacks to make your life easier. Laundry is one of those things that we all have to deal with. And by following the tips in this video, you can make your laundry life more organized and less stressful. If you're new around here, I'd love it if you would subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 7 p.m. I do loads of home and organization content, speed cleans, life hacks, vlogs, shop with me and haul videos. I would love to have you as a subscriber. So my first tip is to assess where you are now. The best thing you can do is grab a pen and piece of paper and I want you to write down the following. Where do you currently put dirty laundry when it's waiting to be washed? What is your process for sorting it? How many loads do you do a day or a week? How are you currently physically washing your clothes? Which products are you using and which settings are you using on your machine? What is your process for drying and how do the clothes get sorted and put away. So out of all this, highlight or put a little ring around your problem areas. These will be the bottlenecks that are causing you issues and stress in life. So for example, in our old house, before I had our new laundry room organized, I had a big problem with clean, ready to be sorted laundry clogging up my bedroom. I used to sort it all and put it all away once a week, which meant that by the end of the week I had a massive amount of baskets and baskets of clean unsorted laundry taking over my bedroom and just quite frankly stressing me out. So this was our biggest problem that I knew I needed to address. What is your biggest laundry headache? Let me know in the comments before we carry on. So the next step is we're going to develop or streamline your new laundry system. Now I have got laundry routine videos which go into this in depth for exactly what I do, but in essence, you're going to need to figure out where you're going to store your laundry that needs to be washed, and we will go into this in more depth in a second. You need a place for all of your laundry detergents and products to be kept. So they're easy for you to access, but safe and out of reach for children. You need somewhere you can hang up clothes that need to be dried, that don't go in the tumble dryer. For us, we've actually got two hanging rails between a wall and a calyx unit above a radiator, and we put a sliding door over that to make an airing cupboard. Then you need a way to store and sort your clean clothing ready to go away. For us, we've got another calyx unit, one box per family member, the stuff gets sorted straight into those boxes and it's stored there out of the way rather than causing clutter around my house. And then when those boxes are full, they get given to each individual family member to be put away. So take a look at that video after you've seen this one, of course, see if there are any bits from my routine that you can implement into yours. My next tip is to put a load of laundry on every single day. Day. Now I know this might sound a bit boring, but hear me out. Doing laundry every day really helps to keep the overwhelm away. Just like an apple a day keeps the doctor away, a load a day keeps the overwhelm away. Maybe if you're a smaller family, you won't need to put on laundry every single day. I mean, there are six of us here and I swear sometimes there's so much laundry, there are other people living in my house creating laundry that I have not met yet. But if you are a smaller family and you don't need to do it every single day, at least check, at least have a moment in your day where you check and you you think, do I need to put a load of laundry on? And if there is a load that needs to go on, you pop it on and that way the machine is doing the work while you're doing other things. That's the ultimate definition of multitasking and it just stays on top of it. I talk about this a lot on my Instagram stories and the number of messages that I get saying, thank you so much for reminding me. It has been a game changer to do this every day rather than letting it build up. And the reason I harp on about it is I have been that person where it has built up and built up and really, really stressed me out. And I don't want that for you. My next tip is to utilize baskets for sorting. So I have a designated basket for damp laundry. I will go into this and how I sort laundry again in a little bit, but I use baskets for sorting, not just the dirty laundry, but the clean laundry too. They're good for sorting your laundry, transporting your laundry around the house, and generally for tidying and organizing other elements in your house that are not laundry too. If you are buying baskets, try and make sure that you buy multiple baskets 
baskets of the same type so that they stack within each other because I've also been there where I've had lots of different baskets they're all mishmashed and they don't stack and they don't go away neatly so lots of the same basket stack easily and store when you don't need them my next tip is to use the right products for the right job rather than taking a one-size-fits-all approach to laundry detergent now I'm delighted to say that this video is brought to you in partnership with ace who have got an amazing range of products to go alongside your standard laundry detergent to tackle stubborn stains I've been using the ace for whites especially on my girls white summer socks you know those little cutesy summer socks that they wear with the little bows on them for school well for some reason they managed to come home dusty and disgusting and sort of brown but I've been using ace for whites and they've really brought them back to life it's also fantastic for our white bedding and just keeping your whites nice and bright and avoiding them going that nasty dingy gray color now for whites that are delicate because obviously that can be a bit of a problem if something is white you want to bring it back to being white but it's one of those items that says you can only wash it on a cool wash you can actually use ace for colors and it's active from just 30 degrees which is fantastic and both ace for colors and ace for whites just get added in alongside your normal detergent for pre-treating stains Ace have this stain remover spray so when you know there's been a disastrous spillage you can tackle it before it even goes into the machine and then Ace Power Mousse can be used for pre-treating stains but also around the home in a non-laundry context for stains on upholstery or even in your bathroom so the Ace lineup are really great products to have in your laundry arsenal so that you can tackle stains and avoid having ruined clothes another thing worth mentioning under the using the right product for the right purpose category is to avoid using fabric softener for anything that you want to remain absorbent so if you want to keep cloths towels or even cloth nappies as absorbent as they can be avoid the softener because this really does damage the absorbency of fabrics learn your machine settings it's well worth having a little dive through your machines instruction manual now if you don't have your machine instruction manual to hand chances are you will be able to look up the model of your machine and find it online chances are that your washing machine is actually capable of doing a lot more than just using the one setting that you probably use I mean let me know in the comments how many of your machine settings do you actually use how much of your machine's handbook have you actually read do you know all that it does and do you maximize all that your washing machine does from the most basic level it's just worth noting which settings on your machine are best for washing for a really quick wash because if you've got really lightly soiled clothes it is not worth washing them on a really long wash because it just causes extra wet so look out for just a freshen up wash on your machine then choose a standard wash for your kind of everyday soiled laundry and then for towels bedding anything that wants to be washed hotter look for longer settings on your machine with extra rinses and especially with cloth nappies I have got a whole cloth nappy series that I filmed back when my daughter was in cloth nappies which goes into this in a lot more detail but for things like cloth nappies or if your family have sensitive skin look for settings on your machine with an extra rinse because that extra rinse will really get rid of any detergent clinging to the fabric and there will be less irritation to your family's skin if you've been following me for a while this next tip will not come as a surprise to you for your laundry products keep one to use and one as a backup. There is nothing more annoying than going to do laundry, realizing that you have run out of the products that you need, you don't have enough detergent, you've got a stain, you've run out of your stain remover and you can't tackle it, and then you end up with a backlog. So every time you open your backup product, make sure you pop that item onto your list to purchase next time you are in store or shopping online. One to use one as a backup system has saved my skin so many times not just with laundry but with other cleaning products and food items around the home. Now comes the debate to separate or not to separate your wash. There is a bit of a trend going around which is set to minimize the amount of sorting you have to do and in this system each family member has their own laundry basket. That family member's laundry only gets washed with that family member's laundry and that way it just gets given directly back to said family member and no sorting is required as to whose sock is this whose top is that 
because everything stays separated. But this does not allow for separating with colours. This system can sound appealing if you're not dealing with stains, if you've not got any colour running issues and everything is just being washed on a really light, almost a refresher wash. This could work for you. I don't do this for a couple of reasons. First of all, I like to keep on top of the washing. So rather than allowing each family member's laundry to build up and build up before it's given back to them, I like to keep it going so that things get returned clean as quickly as possible. The second reason I don't use this system is I do personally like to separate my loads. Now, if things are not very soiled, and I'm just doing refresher washes, I do some mixed loads. If I am certain that I'm washing clothes that are definitely not gonna run, if there is any hint that clothes might run, I do throw in a reusable color catcher. These are especially good if you've got like a red and white stripey top and it's the first time you've washed it and you're worried the red may run into the white or indeed into the rest of the laundry. But I digress. I like to at very least sort into a darks and a lights load, and I like to keep those separate. Since I've discovered just how much of a difference the Ace for Whites makes to my whites, I do like to wash my whites totally separate, even from my lights, so that the whites are really coming out glowing white. And it is worth mentioning that I always keep damp laundry separate from dry clothing laundry. So all of our cloths, towels, anything like that that is damp gets upstairs just chucked in the bath rather than in the laundry hamper and then I carry it downstairs and I've got that separate basket for wet washing as in damp needs to be washed washing as opposed to clothing and dry items. This is because one little flannel or something left in with your other clothes. If it's left there for a couple of days can very quickly turn to mold and actually ruin your clothing. So you know if you've got a damp basket, that is a high priority load. That needs to be washed as quickly as possible to avoid any damp, yucky situations. And you know that you've not got anything in amongst your lovely, delicate laundry of your clothing and things, making it all go a bit nasty. So let me know in the comments, do you think that washing each family member's clothing separately would work for you? Perhaps if you have less than six people in your home, this could work. It would avoid the inevitable laundry sorting as it came out of the machine. But then on the other hand, and it's longer that it would take to build up a load. It wouldn't be as easy to separate out the loads unless you waited till there was a massive build up. It's got its pros and cons. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Identify and pre-treat stains before you wash them. As soon as a stain occurs, the quicker you act, the more likely you are to be able to banish it for good. If my children especially spill something, then I do tend to just whip it off them, treat it as quickly as possible with either the Ace Stain Remover or the Ace Power Mousse. But the quicker you can treat or soak the stain, the better. And it's absolutely essential to make sure that you do this before it goes in the wash and that that stain is treated accordingly. So the stained laundry needs the pre-treat and it needs to be going into the wash with some ace whites if it's for whites or some ace for colors if it's colors or whites that can only be washed up to 30 because remember that ace for colors is active at just 30 degrees. Check your clothing as it comes out of the washing machine for any stains that have not been fully removed because the worst thing that you can do is put an item with a stain that has not been fully removed into the tumble dryer because it will bake it in and then it will be almost impossible to get out. So check your clothing, make sure that any stains are gone and anything that's not been fully removed, retreat and rewash. Make sure you're reading the care labels on your clothes. Check the temperature at which they can be washed. Some things are hand wash only, but if you go back to the tip about reading your machine instructions, some washing machines have a hand wash setting. And some items you're able to wash at a hotter wash if required, which can be great, especially if they need a bit of sanitizer. And some items are quite specific in saying that you can't use softener with them. So in order to avoid ruining your clothes, make sure you check out the care labels. This one is about bedding laundry. So before you put your bedding into the washing machine, whether it's buttons or poppers, button or popper, it up. Otherwise, you will find missing items 
inside your bedding, possibly months after they got lost in there. So pop them up before they go in the machine and it just stops other items working their way inside your duvet cover. Then when your bedding is clean and dry, fold it up neatly and place it inside one of the pillow covers from the set and that way it keeps all of your bedding sets neatly together for when you need them and avoids you having to hunt around for matching pillowcases. When it comes to drying, hang things in shape as much as possible. So like I mentioned earlier, we have a drying area in my laundry room, which is just two hanging rails placed between a calyx unit and the wall. But the fact that I hang these items in shape on hangers as smoothed out as possible and then hang them up above a heat source which is the radiator means they barely need any ironing at all. And one other laundry item that you're going to need to clean, the washing machine itself. You can't expect your washing machine to clean your clothes efficiently if it is gunky and quite frankly disgusting. If your detergent drawer comes all the way out you can give it a good scrub or just pop it in the dishwasher. Give the inside of your door a little bit of a wipe out. You can buy specific products to clean your washing machine or you can just run a hot empty wash with a bit of disinfectant to clean out those pipes. If you keep your washing machine clean and serviced, it will last you longer. And we all know, me included, how disastrous it can be when your washing machine fails you and you have a massive backlog of laundry and no means of cleaning it. Did that happen to us during the lockdown? Yes, it did, and it was a bit disastrous. And don't forget to count your wins. Laundry is, yes, a bit of a thankless task and it's endless but as long as you're keeping on top of it that is the best you can do it's a nightmare task because it literally never ends but by implementing some of these tips it should mean that your laundry life is far less stressful so which of these tips do you already use in your life and which of them are you now going to try out and implement thank you so much to ace for working with me to bring you this video look out for ace products next time you are shopping anywhere that cleaning products are sold. If you have liked this video, please give it that massive thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday at 7pm. More videos for you to enjoy are all around me. Click on one and I shall see you in that video. Bye!